now if he can go down and get seven, then now he has the advantage yeah, here in their third possession. Yeah, that's exactly what he's going to be looking to do here. And you heard Holly he said he's hard to stop, man. I'm just, I'm just trying to keep up. <laughs> and here's a bomb to T.Y. Oh, Hill. Oh. And oh my, the young Keva has done it again. Uh, Seam right over the middle. That deep third can't get there. Kiv lets it rip. Bouye is step too oh. slow. Needs to move the chains. Drini Joka, last name Joka. Putting, uh, putting hands over there on Dubby. Oh, he got him again. Right back. T.Y. Hilton will give Kim. No, I'm about to go in. Tell me that I couldn't do it, but I got to bring it back. So they're really not with it. Let's go. Tell me where you're from, where you stay. Now I keep it lit from the coast to the bay. Peace on the right. If you guys are looking to get cheap and instant Madden 18 coins, be sure to head over to muttcoinbank.com and use promo code MAZE at checkout for 10% off. This past weekend in Burbank, EA held another really big sanctioned tournament for the top competitive players from around the world. Now the tournament's still going on, so we don't really know who the winner is, but group stages are underway and Group B is completely finished and Young Kiv took Group B by storm going 3-0 and and completely dominating all of his opponents. Now I watched these games and something I noticed when watching was Young Kiv had a lot of really good one play touchdowns. One of them he used a few times in the same game against Hollywood and it was a cover 3 beater touchdown and that's what I'm going to be going over for you guys today. I actually got a couple clips he ran from the tournament that I'm going to run right now and show you guys before I break down what he did to get those one play touchdowns. Now if he can go down and get 7 that now he has the advantage yeah, here in their third possession. Yeah, that's exactly what he's going to be looking to do here. And you heard Holly he said he's hard to stop, man. I'm just, I'm just trying to keep up. <laughs> and here's a bomb to T.Y. Oh. Hill. Oh. And oh my, the young Kiva has done it again. Uh, Seam right over the middle. That deep third can't get there. Kiv lets it rip. Bouye is step too oh. slow. Needs to move the chains. Drini Joka, last name Joka, putting, uh, putting hands over there on Dubby. Oh, he got him again. Right back. T.Y. Hilton will give Kim the lead again. So basically, the play he was using was out of Gun Bunch. And now, for those of you who don't know, Gun Bunch has been the most popular and dominant passing attack over the past few years. And uh, Bane really popular by Skimbo, but some other guys have been running it and it is really, really effective. Now when running this, uh, the one thing I'll say is try to get your fastest receiver in this position right here. The, the middle guy in the bunch on the right side, um, you want your fastest guy. So Amari Cooper is probably the fastest receiver on the Raiders. So I subbed him in right there and the play that he was running is corner strike. Now I don't know what it is about corner strike. Um, something about the corner route is really, really good for cover three beaters. So I'm going to call corner strike. And then um, I'm going against the Broncos. So if some of you guys commented, you guys want corners and DBs with higher zone coverage, higher play rec. The Broncos have probably the best corners in the game. They got a Chris Harris and a Keep Tlaib. So uh, that's not going to be the issue here. We're going cover three sky. And there's a few things I want to get into before the play even starts. So as you can see, I am all the way back at like the five yard line. So this is about as long as you can get. And again, like I said, going against the best corners in the game. And something else I want to note is every time he ran that one play touchdown, it was to the wide side of the field. Now this play is not going to work to the short side of the field. So for instance, I'm going to flip the play right here and I'm going to run it to the short side of the field. So the adjustments are very simple. All I did was max protect or all he did was max protect. And then you're going to fade this, this receiver, uh, Cooper. Now this is very similar to a lot of other cover three beaters we've ran. So we're not going to go into it too much, but basically I like to put Patterson, the outside guy on a drag, just as another check down route, just in case no one's open or it doesn't work. But when I run it to the short side of the field, I'm going to show you right now that it does not work. As you see, he gets covered right there, and uh, you're just pretty much throwing it into coverage. Maybe going to throw an interception. So do not run this to the short side of the field, or it will not work. Now I'm going to show when we run it to the wide side of the field. And as you guys, when I'm talking about the wide side versus the short side, you see I'm on that far right hash mark. So the short side of the field is everything to the right. The long side of the field or the wide side is everything to the left. So uh, we're going to run it to this wide side and show you how this works out. 
And as you see there, it is going to work, and Cooper is going to be wide open and able to take that 401 play touchdown the same way that he did in the tournament. So how are you going to know whether it worked or not? You're going to be watching this corner right here. So for here, I'm using Chris Harris Jr. as the example. Um, when Cordero Patterson and Amari Cooper get off the ball, they get off like they're both going straight, like they're going deep. So what's going to happen is he's going to open up his legs and start running, sprinting back like anybody would. But for some reason, when he breaks on the corner route, he goes back into this backpedal and he slowly backpedals. That's how you know it works. Because when he's backpedaling now, it allows Cooper to keep pushing and get behind him. And then like other cover three beaters, you just pass lead it to the outside and you get right behind him. But when it's a little quick corner like this, I don't know what it is that triggers him in his zone to make him start backpedaling instead of running, but uh, it does. And so because of that, he's going a little bit slower. And as you see, Amari Cooper just blows right by him. Now, I think it has something to do with the corner being very quick and short short as opposed to a play like mesh where as you see the corner is a lot deeper so i'm going to call mesh and i'm going to show you the exact same play and show you that it doesn't really work the same all right so if you max protect just like we did before and put cooper on a fade route i'm going to show you that this is not really working the same as it did last time as you see chris harris plays it perfectly and there's no way in hell you're going to be able to get that for a one play touchdown all right so we're going to look at the exact same thing when they both push off like they're going deep uh, Chris Harris again breaks into this sprint backwards but for some reason when he breaks on the corner route this time it does not trigger him to uh, backpedal like he did in the last one so not all plays and all corner routes are going to work the same I think what it might have to do with is when Cooper gets rerouted in this play he gets pushed to the outside of the receiver and therefore Chris Harris Jr. is going to play him more because he's on the outside so what you want is a clean release from Cooper and to have him able to stay on the inside of that outside receiver who's running the corner route. So I'm actually kind of live labbing this right now. So I call the different formation so there's not a linebacker who's rerouting Cooper. And we're going to see uh, if he gets open downfield. I'm not sure if he is or not. As you see, he got a little bit more of a clean release there. And I think we did actually, yep. So it actually does work. So that is the secret right there. So as you watch this one, you see Cooper's going downfield and he doesn't get rerouted until like 10 yards downfield and he barely gets rerouted at all. So when Cordero Patterson does break on his thing, it triggers Chris Harris to play outside a little bit more and slow down. So as you, as you can see here, he kind of slows down and falls off Cooper who's able to run by him a little bit. So we're going to show that one more time. He is running with Cooper. And then the corner breaks, and as you see, he slows down and starts fading out to the outside, and Cooper's able to run by him. So I think that is the secret right there, is the release of that inside receiver rather than the speed or the type of corner. So that's something to think about when you're running this. You want someone with really good release. So something else I want to note is when Young Kiv ran it, he was actually pressed. So we're going to set up the cover three beater. He's running against the press. So if you don't know what that means, it just means the corners were pressed, and the safety was actually down in the box right here to help stop the run. So I personally like to do that in cover three all the time is bring that safety down but I think that's going to make the cover three beater work even better but we're going to find out right here so with everybody pressed down oh yeah that's wide open now okay that was a great throw Derek Carr but uh as you saw it was wide open I'll run it one time and get a completion on it yeah as you see Amari Cooper is wide open a lot more open now that everyone was brought down in the box and pressed I know a lot of people again do that when they run cover three because they want to stop the run better so they bring that safety down I personally do that all the time but again that's going to make this play even more effective so the two things we've learned when running these cover three beaters what's going to work best is you want someone with really good release so for instance Cooper has a lot better release than some other receivers like Roberts or Patterson and so he's not going to get pushed as far outside the farther outside he gets pushed the better the corner is going to play it so you want to be able to have someone with good release who's going to be able to stay on their route inside that outside corner receiver, if that makes sense. You want this Cooper, you want Cooper, the X receiver, to stay inside the corner route at all times. Do not want him to get pushed outside, and that's going to make this work even better. Something to reiterate that you want to look at to see if it's working or not is if that corner starts backpedaling, then you know it's over. You know you got him. So you see when he breaks on the corner, he starts backpedaling. I don't really know why. It's something to do with the corner route, but corner strike works a lot better than some other ones. Um, I think it has to do with because it's a little bit quicker of a corner route. It's not as deep. Um, but basically, yeah, that's it to breaking down this cover three beater. Corner strike out of bunch, a really good play to do it with. I highly recommend you guys find that in your playbook of choice. I know it's in a ton of playbooks. I know for sure it's in New England. It's in Houston Texans. So I urge you guys to go find that in your playbooks and hopefully it helps you guys out. If it did, be sure to leave a like on this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Now